Why are my feet always cold? This is a very common question, especially in cold climates like Michigan. So I'm gonna tell you, a lot of the times, it's nothing to worry about, but another chunk of the time, it is something to worry about. Now, this isn't just if you're getting married, but cold feet can be a symptom of blood flow problems, hormone problems, medication problems, systemic problems, lack of exercise. I'm gonna go over why this is happening, why you have cold feet, and exactly what you should do about it. And we're starting now. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. Cold feet aren't just for grooms on wedding night, or I should say wedding day, because at nighttime then they're happy. But what cold feet are, most of the time it's nothing to worry about. In a cold climate like this, in Michigan, for example, what happens is the feet and the fingers are the furthest parts from your heart. So if you measure with a ruler from your heart down to your feet, it's a pretty long distance. And what happens is the blood vessels get more and more narrow and the surface area to blood flow ratio is uh, you know not the best in your body. In your torso, you have a lot of tissue and less surface area, but in your hands, in your feet, you have a lot of surface areas and comparatively less blood flow. So most of the time, cold feet and cold hands are absolutely nothing to worry about. But where you do wanna worry is if they're cold and painful. If one hand or one foot is cold, but not the other. But here's when you wanna worry. When you have really cold temperature to the point where it's aching, if it's purple, red, blue, if it's getting discolored like that, that's when you wanna worry. If you don't have any feeling in your toes, in your feet, that's when you wanna worry. If just one toe or one foot compared to the other are discolored, if they're cold but the other one's hot, that's when you wanna worry. If this is getting worse and worse where you're like, hey, something does not seem right here, then you want to worry and you wanna get diagnosed a little bit more. But generally, if you're just cold and it warms up and there's never any pain, odds are you're probably in good shape. But I'm gonna go over things that you do want to worry about. The number one biggest thing is circulation problems. And this is where you'd go see your podiatrist or your vascular specialist. Number one, if you have heart problems, sometimes the heart cannot pump enough blood flow to the rest of the body. So arteries bring blood flow down to your toes and veins bring blood flow up to your body. So number one, if your heart's not pumping properly, this is heart problems, then that might be an issue. You know, if you're having chest pain, if you've put on a lot of weight and your body can't keep up with your weight. So realistically, obesity is a big one because if you're swelling a lot, there's a lot of back pressure against your heart, then your heart has to work even harder. Also, your blood vessels can narrow, and as they narrow, there's less blood flow getting down to your toes. So things that can be done are an arterial brachial index. So that's an ABI. So as a podiatrist, this is something I do quite a bit to make sure the blood vessels down to your toes aren't too narrowed. The next thing is there's blood clots. If you have a blood clot, the blood flow coming back up might be an issue. So if there's a lot of swelling in your leg, that might look purple. The extra girth might look a little cooler. So that might be another thing. Another one is lymphedema. So swelling, uh, that could be a big issue. If you're very swollen, if you have varicose veins, thick purple veins, and your feet are getting cold, this video will help you out on that. I, had, I go over that for a long time in depth that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. The next thing is peripheral neuropathy. This is called stocking and glove. So glove on your hands, stockings on your feet. So your hands and your feet, the nerves just don't react as quickly. So basically, if you touched your fingers and your toes, you don't feel as good as you once would. So if you take an ice cube and touch your toes and you don't really feel it, or you touch your fingers and you don't really feel it, but if you put it on your neck and you're like, oh boy, that's cold, that means your fingers and your feet are maybe not feeling it as much. Try doing that with an ice cube at home, but just don't complain about me in the com comments. I know it's a shocking thing already. But if you think you have peripheral nerve disease, this is something that a lot can be done about, and a podiatrist or your primary care doctor should diagnose you. This video right here will tell you a lot about peripheral nerve disease 
And this is potentially something that could prevent you from feeling uh, like it's warm rather than it truly being cold. But at the same time, these nerves don't make your blood vessels open up as much, so that can cause a problem. The next thing is systemic problems. So weight gain, diabetes, you know, metabolic problems like kidneys, liver problems. So this is overall associated with aging and weight gain, but your body can't regulate temperature as much and it has more fluid to manage. If there's more fluid to manage, it can't warm up as quickly and it can't cool down as quickly. So on average, people with more systemic problems have a harder time adjusting to temperatures. Anemia. So if you have chronic disease, cancer, this is where people aren't getting enough iron or chronic disease. Their red blood cell content might be low, so you're not able to warm yourself as much. Again, if you feel tired, lethargic, this might be anemia, and it's a good idea to get checked out by your podiatrist or primary care doctor. Raynaud's disease. So Raynaud's disease is poor coping to temperatures. This is if your uh, fingers and toes really spasm. If you go from cold to like a warm shower and your fingers and your feet throb a lot, this might be Raynaud's. This is a video that I'm gonna put some links down to because this is an important one to get diagnosed as well. But you'd really feel in pain for the average person with Raynaud's syndrome, and it's a little bit more rare. This is probably not you. So what do you do in this case? Number one, I always recommend go see your primary care doctor or podiatrist at our clinic. We have everything all at once. We work as a team between internal medicine and podiatry. And what happens is we check your blood flow tests, arterial Dopplers, uh, venous Dopplers for clots. We do a nerve tests to see if you have peripheral nerve disease. We'd evaluate you from that standpoint. So that's really the key with these finer details, but we're still gonna go over great treatments that work extremely well. So for treatment, here's what you wanna do. Warm socks are really good. If you're very swollen, compression socks are amazing. I love compression socks too. If you have poor blood flow, and you're not swollen, don't wear compression socks. But generally, if you're really swollen and you do have bl good blood flow, then compression socks are a great idea. This is the majority of the people. Most don't actually have peripheral arterial disease where you're discluded from or not included in wearing compression socks. There's different types of compression socks. So there's the knee-high ones that are over the counter. There's knee-high ones prescribed by a podiatrist like myself. So they can be 20 millimeters of mercury, 30 millimeters of mercury, or 40 millimeters of mercury or more. These ones that you buy over the counter are more like 10 millimeters to 15 millimeters of mercury. But what I would recommend is start off with over the counter stuff. The doctor stuff is hard to get and it's so tight and so uncomfortable that you can barely move and it might not necessarily be good for you unless your doctor specifically recommended it. So as always, I include some of my favorites, some of the best rated ones, but you don't have to get anything from me. You know, uh, these are not my products by any means. So check out some of these compression socks right here. So you could see down here the different size. They actually do a good job showing you the different colors here. But specifically what you want to look at is they're not that expensive. Like eight pairs for $17. Like, I mean, come on, that's like $2 per pair of socks. So it's like a dollar per sock that you can keep re-wearing. So you can kind of see uh, these are meant to be more athletic. There's some sizing guides. But these are marketed as nursing socks but the what i want you to look at is 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury this is too low of compression for insurance to cover most adults that have swelling problems will not be able to get on the 20 to 30 or 40 millimeter compression socks these are so tight that nobody wears them in my experience everybody tries to buy them but maybe like two percent of people actually wear them get something that's low cost so for like, you know, a, a dollar per pair here, uh, that's lower compression. If you find that it's not enough compression for you, then get something heavier. Don't goof around starting with like the 40 millimeter mercury, trying to get insurance to cover it because you're going to jump through a lot of hoops. You're going to waste a lot of time and it's going to cut into your skin and you're going to hate it. If you're like 98% of the patients I see, start with something low cost and lower compression, see how it works, see how it fits into your routine, and then go up to the higher compression.
at the same time, take a look right here, the 20 to 30 millimeter mercury are like $15. Why would you waste time driving to like different uh, outlets, wasting gas, especially the price it is, trying to uh, exchange prescriptions from your doctor to the medical supply company to get something like this when it's so cheap online? It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And realistically, you should go with the lower compression. This for the average person is probably a little bit too high and doesn't provide a ton of benefit. It'll cut into your skin and hurt you more than it will benefit you. So start with the lower compression rather than the high compression. Down in the show notes, I include my favorites. This is a big one, diet, but losing weight will always help you in 99% of cases. Certainly if you have some diseases, you know, check with your doctor first, but I'm a huge fan of fasting and I put some links down to my fasting videos down in the show notes big believer in fasting for anyone over 18 or anyone who doesn't have gout for most cases. Hydration. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water. Drink warm trees. Drink warm waters. You know, don't burn your tongue, but still stay well hydrated with warm liquids. Nerve disease. If you have nerve disease, that's a separate issue. Uh, I have a video that I linked earlier and down in the show notes, there's a ton of treatments and medications and vitamins that you can take that can help with nerve disease if that's your problem. And for prevention, if you have blood flow problems, limit the caffeine. You know, I'm a big caffeine lover, but if you have health issues like peripheral arterial disease, skip the caffeine. Try exercising more, get in better shape. So weight loss and exercise is a big one. I love to talk about exercise, but for the scope of this video, we'll keep it brief. Skip going barefoot. This is one big thing. I love slippers for inside the house, and I'm gonna go over some slippers, good socks, that's a great key for cold feet. As far as slippers goes, I'm a big fan of Vionic slippers for women. So see for these types, uh, you have pretty nice built-in arches. They're not really expensive. They're like in the 40, $30 range, but you can see the arch is pretty aggressive in most of these. You can't really go wrong with a brand like Vionic. So Vionic is excellent. Vionic caters more towards ladies, I would say, even though they do have some shoes, I would recommend uh, don't use them for shoes, but kind of like a house slipper to walk around the house. They are fantastic. There are better shoes you can get though. Uh, for men, I would recommend, for men, I would recommend something like a Spenco. So see, they're just a little bit more earth tones. I kind of have this one up here in the corner that works really well. So these can work really well. See, they make slippers, sandals. Um, my wife uses these. She loves the Siesta Slide. Um, so these are really good as well. So Spenco and Vionic are great. For shoes inside the house, if I had to pick just one, go with the Brooks Ghost that's down in the show notes. So you can see last year's model is a little bit cheaper at about $109. Uh, the new model, the 14, is like $140. These are phenomenal shoes. If you can get an insole from your podiatrist, an over-the-counter insole, and again, down in the show notes are my favorite, get a good Brooks Ghost, uh, get the insoles we recommend down in the show notes. It's gonna really make a big difference for you. If that helped and you have foot pain, check out this video, this is for you. Please subscribe, please leave us a comment. It makes a big difference and let us know if we suck or if we need to improve.